Let's open up the application that you created in the last video called My First MVC. Once you open that application, we've already talked about the structure of the different folders in the application, but what I want to show you is what actually gets created when you create an MVC application. One of the first things that happens is that Bootstrap is automatically brought into the project. Now, if you needed to use jQuery along with Bootstrap, you could go to Tools, NuGet Package Manager, Manage NuGet Packages for Solution, and then from here, you'd be able to choose other applications. For instance, uh, we want to make sure that we have the Entity Framework checked, which allows us to work with database. We could bring in jQuery. You could click on jQuery and click Install. Click OK. And then it will go ahead and install everything you need for jQuery. We had some Bootstrap in there, just the minimum of it. But let's go ahead and say, yeah, we want all of Bootstrap. Click Install. Click OK. It adds other files Bootstrap might need. And then there's a whole bunch of different things you can do with Manage NuGet Packages. And this allows you to bring in libraries from other things that are already created. Go ahead and close that window. And if you notice, it added more content. Now in the content file, that's where we have all of our CSS. And that's usually uh, where CSS is put. However, if you create your own content, you might want to create a brand new folder. Real simple to do. You would just come up to My First MVC, right mouse click on it, and choose Add. Add, and then choose New Folder. And then you could give it a name, and maybe you call it My CSS, and press Enter, and then you could start putting your own CSS in that folder. Let's see what else gets created when you create an MVC application. If you notice, there are three controllers that are already made. Remember, the job of the controller is the go-between for the model and the view. It gets data from the model and serves it up to the view, which the view is simply what the, uh, the HTML that gets rendered to the browser, and then it takes the data from the view and sends it back to the model, so we can update the model. Three controllers that get made, there's an account controller, manage controller, and home controller. What we like to do in MVC is break out the functionality of the different logic and put them into separate controllers. For instance, the account controller, this one keeps track of login information. And you'll find out that this uh, default MVC created a bunch of login stuff for you. There's an action method for login, and here's a different action method for login. And notice you can do that because the signatures are different. So you can have multiple action methods with the same name as long as the signature is different. Same thing with the verify code and another verify code, a register and another register. So these allow you to work with getting information from logins and it's already written for you. The other one is manage controller. The manage controller also works with controlling the account for the login. So those are controllers you might, might not use depending on if you implement logins and if you do then a lot of the work's already done. The home controller is the default controller. This is the one that says you'll get called if you try to do something with this website. Once again remember that your route maps are the ones that determine who gets called when you run a program. And by default, it's going to look for a home controller and then the index method within that controller. And that's defined for you in the app start folder and the route config file. Right there, it calls this route default. And it says that it's looking for a controller slash an action and a slash some other value. Now, if they don't type anything in when they visit your website, they simply type in www.website.com, then that means there's nothing in the URL except for the domain name. And so it would say, let's go ahead and go find the home, the home controller, or actually the controller called home controller, which is right there, and then go find an action method called index. So if I went to the home controller, 
Here's the home controller and it finds the action method called index and then it says let's go return a view that was created and send it to the browser and let it render it as HTML. Well by default if you don't put anything inside the parentheses MVC ASP.NET will try to find a view with the same name as the action method or in this case it's going to go try to find index.cshtml in a home folder under the view folder. Let me say that one more time. When you go to execute an action method it knows the name of the controller you're in and it uses that first part of the controller for instance home as the folder name under the view folder. So I should be able to go to the view folder and see if there's a home folder and another method called or a view called action and a view called about and a view called contact. Let's go see. If I scroll down and here's my views, here's three different uh, directories, account, home, and manage and shared. There's four actually. Click on home, there's the about, there's the contact, and there's the index. And each one of these index methods map to the same name over here in the home folder. What does that mean? Well, that means that if I was looking at the account controller, and there's an action method called login, then maybe under the views folder, there's a folder called account, which there is, and maybe there's a view called login. I'm going to go ahead and close that file, and I'll take another look at this views folder, and there are there's a file called underscore viewstart.cshtml, right in the same directory structure as the views folder. Let's take a look at that file and it uses something called Razor. Whenever you see the at sign, that means you're using Razor, which is just a type of view engine to process statements. And so the Razor just processes, or it's a syntax used to incorporate other source code within HTML. This view start by default is called by all the views in your system. And this one says, for your views, you're going to go ahead and include a layout found in the views folder, the shared folder, the underscore layout, CSHTML. Now remember, by default, when your views start, they will first come and find this file, if it exists, and execute this statement. This means that all your views will first incorporate the underscore layout, CSHTML. So that's in the shared folder. And that file says it's going to do the following. It's going to bring in this head, this body, and it's going to run a whole bunch of HTML stuff uh, and set up the title and actually bring in some CSS and some other stuff it needs. And then it creates a nav bar. And that nav bar has a header. And it has three spaces in that header. And it's got a link in that header with the word application name that if you click on it, you go to the index method of the home controller. And also within that nav bar, it has three action links, one for home, which sends you to the index method of the home controller. The about word will send you to the about method of the home controller. And the contact word will send you to the contact method for the home controller. In other words, this Razor HTML says you want to do something to help you out with HTML. We call them HTML helpers. And this will create an action link, or in other words, an ahref, and automatically do that within your code. And then after it creates that big menu system, it then says, let's go bring in another one called login partial, which is right here. And so it says, let's go ahead and add another nav bar, and it just keeps building this big HTML file for you using all of this razor. Build another nav bar right with the word register and login. And those are mapped to the register action method in the account controller and the login method in the account controller. And so that's what um, is happening automatically for you behind the scenes working with the views. First of all, the view start automatically gets called. 
it calls layout and the layout calls login partial. And then by the time you run your application, then it'll end up looking like this. Remember, since there's nothing else on this on the URL, it will actually just go to the home controller and run the index view, which says go bring in the underscore view start, which says go bring in the underscore layout and the uh, login. And so there's our application name. It's a link. The home is a link. About's a link. Contact. This was all the items that were made in that nav bar. And then also remember it brought in the other HTML file and did a nav bar right for register and login. And then this is what we call a bootstrap jumbotron. So that's what happens when you create a default MVC application.